Hey everyone! Today we'll have a bit of a fragrant discussion about uh, two fragrances from one of my favorite fragrance houses, which is Guerlain. It is my personal love and I adore a lot of fragrances from their line. And they're very wearable, they're very practical, they're very intelligent in their looks all at the same time. So I feel drawn to a lot of the scents from that house. I should probably make a separate video about the Guerlain perfumes that I have. Today I am going to talk about vintage inspired reference perfumes that Guerlain has. I have two here and we're going to discuss uh, Chant de Roma and we're discuss going to discuss Jardin de Bagatelle. These two are very interesting, both of them. So uh, Chant de Roma. Uh, it's definitely a perfume of its time. It's been initially produced in 1962, I believe, by one of the actual Guerlains. Uh, and it's um, really quite an interesting concoction. Let's start with the bottles. The bottles of perfumes that Guerlains come in, some of them, some of the older ones at least, are very interesting. These are nice little perfume bottles, vintage inspired clearly with the bees, which is of course uh, uh, Guerlain's kind of uh, stamp, their emblem, their signature. Uh, bees are something very interesting and very special because this, this uh, bee signature, bee emblem, came from a long time ago when the house of Guerlain was actually picked to be a representative of uh, of the imperial family once Napoleon came into power. There's a lot of history which of course makes me very excited and I get drawn to it very easily um, but that's basically the flacon, the bottle in which it comes. It's very nice, very vintage inspired and will look great on any toiletry um, table or any kind of a vanity. So the interest of this fragrance is the fact that it's very representative of its time and even before. In the 60s when it was produced initially, I feel like it's still kind of echoed earlier era. It is a very curious fragrance because it is absolutely not safe for right now for our modern fragrance world. This is not a safe fragrance. This is an oddball for now. Of course, in its own time, it was very unique. It were very unique, but very classic and very in step with the time. Right now, it definitely has a huge vintage vibe. Now, what is what is up with this perfume? Uh, first time I sniffed it was a disaster. I was really disgusted in a way. Why? Because the, once you spray, the top notes really present themselves in a very harsh way in this fragrance. You get the very harsh, sharp aldehydes that are spiced with something that resembles carnation, which is difficult sometimes to take in its original form because it's a bit spicy, tickles the back of your throat. And the whole top of this fragrance, which is quite top heavy, creates a bit of a metallic aftertaste. It was not attractive and it is not attractive when you initially apply it, in my opinion. I think this is not a fragrance you should smell five minutes after you apply. You need ten, good 10 minutes to wait to actually find something pleasant about this fragrance because the top notes can be a little bit disheartening. Um, I was surprised by it because after it being repelled initially, I needed to try it several times to get over myself to even want to look for anything in this fragrance because it just created such a visceral reaction in me. I don't think it'll be the same for everybody, but I do not think this is a safe choice. I do think you need to test it, test it, and test it before you get your hands on it. So this aldehyde heavy, slightly spicy, unsettling kind of top really morphs. This is not a fragrance that stays the same. This is not a, um, this is not a uh, sort of stable, uh, na good natured, kind hearted fragrance. This is not a comfortable fragrance at first. You have to grow into it and it has to grow into you. So this blast settles down into in aldehydic floral, and I don't say floral aldehyde, I say aldehydic floral because there are 
there are a, a massive dose of aldehydes in the whole story. It's so aldehyde heavy, it, uh, you know, it, it really floods you with that fresh but spicy, weird sensation. After it settles down, the aldehydes become a lot more tame. They settle down, they uh, create this powdery sensation that aldehydes can create, but not like the cosmetic powder, but like the dustiness. I mean, um, sort of an attic kind of feeling that al some aldehydes can have and eventually do have on skin. Uh, a little bit soapy, quite soapy in fact, because the white florals that are supporting it are the same kinds of white florals that are used in nice handmade expensive soaps. Um, this is, I think, the appeal of this fragrance. What they were going for is aldehyde-rich, soapy, floral, and they definitely got there. There is a bit of a creaminess that underlies these aldehyde florals that it, I'm not sure if I like. It is, a, again, a little bit unsettling because you're mixing creamy with a bit of a sourness and a spiciness with the um, the aldehydes that are so heavy on top, and this merger is nice, but not all the time. It kind of tethers on the edge for me. I'm not, I'm not really sure about whether I'm going to keep this one because I'm really, really trying. I'm working with it, but for me, it's difficult to find common grounds with this fragrance. Some, the florals that meld into something quite soft, quite feminine, a bit of a floral hum undertone, which is very comforting, actually. Um, so if it wasn't for this odd metallic creamy combination that 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 I find uh, Does happen here? Somehow I feel like it would be really really beautiful and wearable and easy to wear However, this very unique note that makes it special and definitely makes it a signature worthy as well as uh, worthy of a collector's item like myself uh, is, is the fact that it's it's super unique with this really weird combination. Um, I don't know if every skin would open up the same way the fragrance that mine has, but on my skin there is this really strange combination that my nose picks up that is a little bit unsettling, but um, of course you must try on yourself and see if, if this works. I, however, I don't think it's a safe buy. It's definitely not a safe blind buy, and it's certainly not a safe buy for a gift, unless a person explicitly tells you that that's what they want. Um, so be aware, I don't think this is safe, but I do think it is interesting enough to create some um, discussion points and to have an opinion about, and uh, could be controversial even, I would say. It's very interesting. Now on to Jardin de Bagatelle. This is uh, in the same kind of bottle. This I believe is 1983 release or early 80s anyway. And uh, again, uh, Jean-Paul Garlin really was the one behind this fragrance. And this is actually a child of its time as well. The the roar of the 80s fragrances, which I love personally, with the loudness and the assertiveness and the unisex vibe and the power that the fragrances had. The florals had a field day in the 80s. Florals were crazy. They were going out of full force. They were ramming through. And um, white florals specifically, uh, among them, tuberose has always been a great, great mountain to surmount. Tuberose is a very distinctive scent that is very carnal, very fleshy, almost, uh, almost textured as you inhale it. It's almost velvet but moist. It's very strange. Um, but very, very interesting scent, very characteristic, very distinctive. Tuberose is something usually, if it's there, um, you will be able to pick out just because of the type of the scent it is. It's the, the molecule synthesized for tuberose is usually quite distinctive. Um, so, <laughs> why am I speaking about this? Uh, because Jardin de Bagatelle is really designed as an aldehyde floral, but in this case, if this is aldehyde floral, this is floral aldehyde. Um, greatly predominated by white flowers, very um, assertive, but in a vintage and 
book kind of way. What I mean to say is that aldehydes do provide a bit of sparkle to the scent. They provide a bit of a champagne feel, a little bit of a bubble, bubble up kind of feeling, as well as some freshness, which is uh, the you know the unoffensive part of aldehydic, aldehydic aroma. It creates those amazing feelings and those amazing sensations, but the offensive part can really result in what I have smelled here. Back to Jardin de Bagatte, here the aldehydes are tame, they are a bit neutered, they don't have the same um, sort of angry presentation, here they're a supporting role. <laughs> but here we get creamy white flowers. It is a whole orchestra of creamy white flowers and the lead in this is the tuberose that I have spoken of. It is fleshy, quite realistic, it is uh, vintage, yes, I would say, and it, it's a bit loud and has a lot to say. The fragrance itself, I must say, is not loud. This is not a very loud fragrance, it's wearable, I think it's appropriate for most occasions, and I don't think it's so out of date that um, people will be raising their eyebrows at you wearing this scent. Unless that's what you're looking for, then, you know, perhaps try something else. I think this is a creamy floral with aldehydes, which is quite pleasant, and it is indeed a good composition. Tuberose is at the forefront. They're supporting jasmine and our fl other flowers that are really uh, uh, creating this quite um, textured, um, very fluffy aroma around this fleshy, fleshy tuberose. So it's quite, so it is very uh, floral heavy. There's not much else here. There are some supporting, uh, supporting notes. The fragrance is not super long lasting, but it lasts well enough. This is not the parfum, so it lasts okay. Uh, and the the base is really, this fragrance seems floral through and through. There's really not that much to the base. There's maybe a bit of moss, maybe a bit of musk, you know, something quite, um, grounding, but not something that's going to overpower them. The base is there to be the base and to be the support upon which the white flowers, heaps and heaps of them, are built. And uh, I have to say the romanticism of this fragrance is, becomes quite apparent um, about maybe 15 minutes after you apply it. I'm imagining a heroine who is a bit romantic, but assertive, perhaps searching for her place in society, perhaps um, trying to fight the man or trying to fight a big boss or trying to fight circumstances. She's fighting something. Um, and, she, and she comes out to walk in this garden every once in a while. So in that way, I think it's quite a, a book-inspired, almost a referential fragrance, where it does smell like the flowers I have mentioned, but in a bit of a regurgitated way, as if somebody described to you this garden and you smell it and this is what it smells like, not necessarily that you're standing there barefoot and sniffing the earth, there's none of that there. So it, it does indeed create an impression of a description of a garden, of a flower bed, rather than the actual, um, you know, the, 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 the moisture, the earth, the uh, other greenery, maybe some weeds, all of that coming together to create a fragrance of a garden. This is not it. This is more of a sort of verbal sketch of a garden, taken from a book, some sort of a romantic era. I'm seeing Jane Eyre when I'm smelling this. This is the garden that would be described by Jane Austen in her books. If you are an extreme lover of white flowers and that's what you want from your fragrance and you do like tuberose, I think that this is a worthwhile uh, fragrance to check out because this is definitely as floral as they go or about as floral as they go. Uh, which also makes it very classic and especially for the time. The florality of this fragrance is uh, difficult to dispute and those who really, really enjoy the white flowers and w how they interplay on the skin, I think would enjoy this, but also not a blind buy because they do have this uh, sort of um, inspiration behind them that is quite vintage. They have this flair, might not suit everybody as well, 
but um, this one I actually recommend more than this one just because the, of the wearability factor. First of all, this lasts better. It's another parfum, here's another toilet, so it should last better. Um, and you can wear it all day. And secondly, Jardin de Bagatelle is a lot more skin friendly, it's a lot more wearable, and I think a lot less objectionable, which is important when you're around other people. You need to make sure that you're not wearing something that can easily affect somebody or offend them. So this is my review on the two of the older Guerlain scents that I own. Very, very beautiful scents, very specific to their time, inspiring and uh, very unique. And I really hope that you continue with your fragrant journey. Have fun with it. Bye-bye.